scary. <laughs> All right, folks, thank you for joining in tonight, and thank you for those who are going to replay this code. Just to let you know, this is Yusuf Chowdhury, and this is a meetup for San Angelo Marketing Group. And Scott, how are you doing, sir? Uh, it's going to be almost an hour, hopefully less than an hour, a session on how to get great ideas for your blog posts. Oh, wow, look at that. Heart's already coming in. Look at that. Two voices, like a clown. All right, so, unfortunately, I won't be able to respond to you. I apologize because it's, a, it's, it's, it's like a class. I'm giving a class and recording this. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. Cool. <laughs> all right. So what's going to happen? If you guys need the presentation, let me know. Keep, you, keep sending your questions because later on when the scope is done, I will check your question and reply back to you through Twitter. Okay. All right. So let's get ready, folks. Now, before I start, how many of you feels like this when it comes to blogging? Like this. Right? You gotta turn on the voice. <laughs> okay. We got, we got so many folks, to, you know, periscoping from here. <laughs> all right. So first of all, how many of you, how many of you actually hear blog by show of hand? How many blog? None of you, except Jeff, the photographer. <laughs> all right. Cool. How many of you actually want to start blogging? Me. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, before we move forward. First, let's figure out and understand how blogging can help you, right? I'm just gonna show you this quick scene and I wanna go back, okay? Now tell me, how, can, how blogging can help you? Why, why do you think blogging is important? Well, when you're, when you're sharing content, it, it makes you a credible source. Right. There, you're able to show your knowledge. And that's one reason you wanna blog, is that, and then the, the keywords that you're gonna be using within your blog, bring your uh, page up on the SEO, because that's what they're looking for, those key words. When you're talking about, I'm the photographer, then you're talking about photo techniques, then that's gonna bring you up. So. That's excellent. So Melissa basically said that it helps with the search engine, right? And it also helps by putting yourself as an expert in an area, right? To show your expertise. To show your expertise, right? And she's absolutely correct. It's one, to show the expertise to who? To whoever's looking for you. <laughs> to, to your audience. Yes. To your actual market, to your actual target market, right? And second, of course, it does help with the search engine because Google likes you to have some type of dynamic website. What I mean by that, dynamic, which is the opposite of a dead website. A dead website basically means you have nothing there except static information, right? Homepage, about page, service page, but there's nothing like a, on a consistent basis where you usually put some sort of cool stuff, right? But if you keep blogging, that means it's dynamic, there's a new information coming in. Does that make sense? So it does, like Melissa said, it does help with the search engine. It also helps you to build a credibility, to be an expert. You know, you know the beauty about this is you don't have to convince somebody that you're an expert. The fact that you're giving value, you're writing some content, and people are reading from even through your website, you are going to become an expert automatically just because you provided those values. And guess what? I mean. Sometimes you have to think about this. If you're blogging, technically, you can consider yourself as an author, <laughs> right? You can actually take a blog post and turn to an ebook and sell it at Amazon and call yourself, I'm an author, I have an Amazon bestseller, right? <laughs> All right? It also helps with what? Creating a community. What I mean by that sometimes, you know, I'm a digital marketer, so I always look for bloggers in the same niche, in the same field, so I can learn from them, so we can, you know, get together, so we can collaborate. It also helps for maintaining your online presence, which means if you blog on a consistent basis, the search engine will notice it, uh, other people from the social media sites are gonna find it, okay, you're maintaining it. If you want to start making money through blogging, anybody knows what is an affiliate marketing? Classic. Well, people basically pay for you mentioning their product or their right. product, mm -hmm. uh, anything you're directing to another, uh, company that's selling something, they, it's kind of like a product placement within your blog. Absolutely. So if I become an affiliate through Amazon, if I become an affiliate through, let's say, Canon, if I'm like, like Jeff, he's a photographer, if he starts doing reviews on all the awesome cameras like Canon and Nikon, and if you're an affiliate with those companies, imagine if you have a list of huge subscribers or quality subscribers, and you blog and you give in reviews, 
that will create audience that will like your reviews and at the same time will buy from you. So when they buy from you, you get paid commission, right? A lot of IT companies like hosting companies have an affiliate, uh, airline website, they do have an affiliate. So if you're a traveler or a travel blogger, you can start doing some affiliate and make some extra cash, okay? You can also get media exposure, believe it or not. You can also get media exposure because you know other media agencies or local TV station or local journalists or local radio station, if they read your content, oh, look, you're, awesome, you're writing some awesome stuff, they can connect with you whether to have your content posted on their site or they're going to ask you to do something else for them. Does that make sense? And of course, what I also love about it, the last two, it generate, generates leads. So people that are interested in your product and services, you're going to get those customers. Those that are not interested in your product, you're not going to get them. And at the end, it helps you to build a list. So this is very, very important. You have to have some sort of list building mechanism, right? So if you offer amazing content, whether it's a blog or even a video or podcast, you need to make sure that you build a list. So those are the benefits of why and how blogging can help you with your business, okay? Any questions? We good? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes. yes. No? Yes? No? Yes? Yes? yes. No? Yes? Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. Now, any one of you use these services? Yes, MailChimp. Use MailChimp? Mm -hmm. MailChimp. Okay. Yeah, if you're a beginner, I mean, you can start with MailChimp. They have like a free version. Okay. Everyone else from Aweber to Eye Contact to Cost and Contact, get response, a vertical response. Those are affordable. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, you can. Uh, pay like you can try them for free some of them for like 20 days some of them for like two months and some of them for one month So try which one do you like if you feel more comfortable with then go with that one now Infusionsoft and green room those are like high-end They're kind of a little bit, you know pricey Okay, but for beginner go ahead and check it out MailChimp because you need to have some sort of lead capture on your blog You don't have a blog with nothing that says you know get into my list to receive with your blog Okay, you definitely need this and the cool thing about these services they will show you and tell you how many of your subscribers are reading, how many of them are opening, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a must. All right, keyword research tools. Anybody, any one of you use one of these? Google. Use Google App, Keyword Planner. Okay, cool. What are we teaching? Keyword Spy and Traffic Travis and AdWords. Awesome, I love Keyword Spy. Keyword is, uh, I'm sorry, Keyword Spy right here. I love Keyword Spy. Uh, Word Tracker, AdWords, SpyFu, but my favorite was this until I found this. <laughs> okay, so the cool thing about the Market Samurai, it's a one time payment of like 90 something dollars. It is connected to Google Keyword Planner. It, it doesn't just give you uh, the most keyword you need to use, but it also helps you to find content. It will tell you, based on those keywords that you were searching for, what kind of content's out there. Okay, and at the same time, it will tell you whether it, it, this keyword is difficult to use or not. Now, that's only one time payment. You can try it for like 14 days for free. Now, Longtail Pro is similar to Market Summary, but it looks like much easier. And they have two options. You can try it for like 10 days for free, or you can pay 97 one time payment, or you can pay 97 plus $27 a month for this one. Okay, so this thing does whatever the market summary does, but it has extra like easy features. I'm gonna definitely show you how to use that maybe in, in one of our classes. Okay, uh, Google AdWords of course is free. Uh, Keyword Spy, Spy Tool, and Word Tracker. They have a, a what, what you call it, a free version and also a paid version. Same thing with the traffic, Travis. Uh, Uber suggests it's a, it's a web tool that gives you ideas. So if you type photography, it will give you a bunch of ideas and titles for your topic, okay? That's what the Uber Suggest does. So if you wanna come with a nice idea for your blog, you can go ahead and use Uber Suggest to get some titles and also use a Google Keyword Planner. And the reason you wanna use this keyword tool is because you need to know, you need to know how many of your audience looking for your type of you know, product or services or content. Because if somebody looking for how to hire best photographer in San Antonio, and you found it, you can actually blog about it. Does that make sense? Any questions so far? Are we good? Okay. All right. Now, these are all the links for the keywords. So you can definitely download the presentation from our meetup and check those sites. In fact, if we have time, we'll go ahead and show you uh, how they look like.
All right, and don't forget, any website must have these two tools. tools. It's like a must. You need to make sure that you install Google Analytics and also Google Webmaster Tool. And now they call it what? Google Search, uh, search. Council. They just changed the name. I don't know why Google does that, especially with the alphabet. <laughs> right? So, so you need to make sure that you have both of those plugins. Now, if you use WordPress, there is a, a WordPress plugin for analytics by Yoist. So look up for Yoist uh, Google Analytics plugin. This one doesn't require a plugin, but it just requires a configuration. The analytics helps you with what? Does anybody know? Tracking where uh, those sources are coming to your website from, whether they're coming from the Twitter. Uh, it also gives you a demographic of the audience that's at your uh, web page. Right. Absolutely. Basically, it will show you where the traffic is coming from, from which location, from which city, from which device, on which page they're spending their you know, time more than the other pages, what's the bounce rate, what's a click, what, uh, what links you're getting from, referral links, organic links, uh, social media links, you know, all that. So definitely you need this because based on your activities on a weekly basis, you need to find out whether my blog post gets the click or not. And this one helps you to make sure that your blog is, or your website, is properly optimized for SEO. One of the cool things about the Webmaster tool, if you get hacked, they'll let you know. That is the beauty of this tool. If you get a malware or, or, or if the server or the Google bot cannot read anything on your page due to some issues with the server, Google will send you an email. So that's why you need those two. It's like a must. Okay? There is a new word only for blogging? No, no. It happens throughout the whole site. But you definitely need this anyway, regardless. It's a new one. Okay? Any question? Well, I got a comment off of your Periscope. That's okay. Like going. Um, we have somebody here who says, you know, he's a, a YouTuber. Uh, but, you know, you blog also with YouTube. So, you, like you, we have talked about in some of the YouTube uh, meetups that we've had where you can make the script um, from your YouTube available. Right. And even put that into your website or something like that, so that again, those keywords are there. Right. For more things that is an excellent point for Melissa because thank you, Scopers. Somebody asked a question about regarding the YouTube, and you can actually repurpose the YouTube. In fact, if you go to YouTube right now and look for Google, Google Master Tool videos, they have the YouTube videos on their blog, on their website, plus they have the transcript. Why would Google post a video and the transcript? Does that make sense? So what you can do to be strategic, you can have the video with the proper keywords and everything so you can get the traffic in YouTube, but you can also embed the YouTube on your website and either have a transcript or write it like a blog post. Okay? That way the search engine can read the content and of course people that don't want to read it, they can watch the video. In fact, to make it even better, you can go to uh, YouTube to MP, YouTube and the TO to mp3.org. If you go to YouTube, to just do a search for YouTube to mp3.org. It's a website, you can, you can just throw in your YouTube link and automatically it will create a, an audio file of your YouTube channel. So that way you can upload it back to iTunes or SoundCloud and now on your website you have a video, an audio and also a transcript for blogging. Okay? Cool. That's the next question. Any more question here? We good? Okay. All right. Now, so when it comes to blogging, a lot of businesses have an issue or a challenge in terms of what kind of content they're going to come up with. That's like the biggest challenge, especially when so many subjects are like oversaturated, right? So before you find any subject or any content for your blog, you need to do some sort of market research, okay? So here are a couple of sites that you can look into, like Google Trends. You can go to google.com forward slash trends and find out what's the most popular topic for this week or this month. Somehow, if I can relate to what I'm providing, if I can relate it to what I'm trying to, you know, write about, maybe I can make some connection. Can you repeat that transcript site one more time for the YouTubers? Yes. So basically, let's say you have a YouTube video. Okay. <laughs> you have a YouTube video. Uh, by default, YouTube will do a caption for your YouTube video anyway. You need to just download the caption and fix it, make sure that it's proper English. Then you can embed the video on your website as a blog, and below that video you can either add the transcript or you can uh, write it as a blog post. Does that make sense? Write it as a blog post. 
Then you can also get an audio version of the video. Why? Because your target market, some of them like, like to listen, some of them like to watch, and some of them might just read everything. Okay? So that way you're hitting your target market with three styles of putting the content. Okay? So let me know if that if I if I answer that question. If you want me to repeat it, I'll repeat it again because I don't have an accent. What to do, what to do, what <laughs> Okay? Now, but we need to do market research, and this research applies everywhere. It doesn't have to be just for blogging. It can be done for blogging, it can be done for social media titles, it can be done for YouTube, it can be done for podcasting. So what you do quickly, I mean, you can go to Google Trends and find out what kind of topic are popular. And I can show you, when we have time, I'll show you how you can go there, check, uh, pick the city or the, or the country and type, let's say, photography. It will show you what kind of trending topic for that specific niche, okay? And based on qu queries, you can start writing a blog post, okay? Number two, YouTube Trends. This is the link for YouTube Trends. You wanna see what's the most popular YouTube videos based on ages. Because there's so many crappy videos out there, right? <laughs> a lot of stupid stuff. But you can select the ages from, let's say, 25 to 50, and you will see what videos are popular. You can also compare one video to another video to see which one is more popular. Because based on those videos and based on those topics, you can come up with another blog post. Does that make sense? You can also, oh, guess what? Do you guys remember Google uh, Blog Search? I don't know if you guys remember. There was another option for Google Blog Search, but they actually disabled it. And now they call it News. So when you go to Google Search, you click on the News tab, and you find all the blog posts within a specific niche. So that way you'll have an idea. If I'm an SEO, I can just go there, Google, news tab and tap SEO, then I can see all the popular topic or popular blog posts on that, on that topic, okay? That will, again, that will give me an idea if these are popular topics, you know, like trending, then I can kind of get some ideas to do it on my own, or I can even take their content and share it in my social media, even put it in my blog, like, you know, give my own opinion, then sharing <clears throat> what that blog post says, okay? Yahoo, and, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Google Alerts. Anybody uses Google Alerts? It's awesome, right? Yes. Very fantastic. So in Google Alerts, you can put in any titles, any topic, and Google will automatically send you, based on your configuration, whether you want it daily or weekly, content just sent to you. Twice a day. You will get it twice a day? Wow, okay. From the very updated. Yeah, so that's a free tool. It will give you some content based on your niche, based on whatever you type as a keyword. You can also add your brand name to make sure that anybody's searching for your brand name or any, anybody's talking about you or any topic within your niche, okay? So far, no question, very good, good stuff, right? Okay, Yahoo Answers. Oh my God, you just go there and just ask a question, you will find people that freaking have no knowledge about what they're talking about, but they can just give answers, right? Now you can take the opportunity, you know how you're gonna use a strategy? You can go there, find the question that you can solve and write your blog. And you go back and answer it and put the link. You can answer it briefly and by the way, for more information, here's my blog that explains it in detail. Okay, so that's the strategy comes through the Yahoo Answers. Now, social media trend, you know in, in Twitter, there's a trend in Twitter. If you look on your left hand side, the trending topic in Twitter, that's one idea. Even Facebook. Facebook has a, the trend right now on your right hand side. Yes. So you can look at the, what's, what's the most popular trending topic and use that to your advantage, whether you're gonna use it as a hashtag, or as a topic, to kind of mingle in the information, right? Buzz Sumo, did anybody use that? That's cool. That is so awesome. So what Buzz Sumo does, let's say I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap photography, it will show me the most popular content within that keyword. And this will give you an idea, okay, this title, is in, this, this content got so many shares, and this is the title. You know what, I can probably use the same title or similar to that title, or I can just learn what they wrote and I can put my own input to make it more interesting. So check it out, Buzz Sumo. <clears throat> now, this is my favorite. There's so many tools out there that will give you some ideas on how to come up with an awesome title. Because did you know that in blog or in email marketing, what, what, what creates an op like a high open rate is the title. The title has to be interesting. Okay? You have to be very, very careful. Because I remember my friend, uh, Ben Luther from, uh, Pressable, remember ZP Kid? Used to, used to be ZP Kid, now they're Pressable. Uh, they were getting tons of hits on their website, like probably 300 hits a day. 
And for some reason, he was ranking for a keyword, uh, for a title, like, I forgot, I forgot what the title was. Yeah, the title was something like losing 30 pounds or something like that. The funny thing, his company is a, it's a web hosting company, it's an IT company, has no relation to weight loss. The reason he was showing up for the topic because his title was a play on words. Something like how the developer can lose 30 pounds by coding or something like that. It was like a funny title. It has nothing to do with losing weight. But for some reason, he ranked, he was getting all this head, but the bounce was so high because it wasn't for the target market, right? So sometimes being creative <clears throat> is funny and it's good, but you need to make sure that I need to provide something that is interesting to my target market. Otherwise, I'm going to get the wrong audience. Does that make sense? So that was hilarious because he found out that he fixed it quickly and of course he took care of his website. Now, uh, so tweak your biz, check it out. I'm going to show you how you can come with an awesome title using tweak your biz. The last one is called atomic reach. So atomic reach, what it does, it makes sure that your content are awesome. So it has some sort of algorithm that tells you you might have like 60% score or 70% score. You have maybe your emotional element is good in this content. And this is an awesome tool, and guess what, they have a WordPress plugin for that one. So you can install the plugin, and whatever content you write, you just sign in, and it'll give you a score whether your content is good or not for your readers. Really, really awesome tool, you gotta check it out. Okay, because you have to make sure that my content, if somebody reads it, they're gonna enjoy it and they're gonna like it. Right? So make sure you use Atomic Reach. Alright? Any more questions? No, sir. Okay, people are asking about your presentation. Absolutely, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna upload it to a slide share, and I'm gonna share with you on Twitter, with every single one of you, or whoever's interested. Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, any more questions? We good? Yes. Awesome. All right, content calendar. In order for your blog to be successful, you gotta be consistent. So what I do with most businesses, I tell them, if you want to blog, I advise you to do it at least once a week. What I mean by that, post it once a week. Meaning? Yeah, you don't have to write every week. You can spend one weekend in the month and write for a blog post and have it automatically submitted to your, to your website. So I recommend once a week. Now, if you do more, of course, that means more effort. At the same time, more results. If you look at Asperger101.com, uh, Jennifer Allen, she, she, I think she got like eight, eight or seven writers that write for, on that website, you know, different topic within the autism, you know, community, but like for social, for family, for medical and whatnot, and she gets like, you know, 150, you know, some top, you know, 200 hits a day, just because of three times a week of blogging, which means the more you blog, the more traffic eventually you're gonna get, right? But again, we are business owners, if you don't have the time to do it by yourself, then I recommend at least minimum once a week, okay? And uh, there is a tool for that, before I show you that tool, let me show you what my favorite person right here, Mary Smith. Content is king, but engagement is queen, and she rules the house. What I mean by that, when you write your blog post, make sure, this is the common mistake that I see, make sure you have a comment box on, on the bottom of your blog post, and social sharing buttons. You want people to enjoy it, you want them to comment, and you want them also to share your content, okay? I feel good when I see some of the blog posts of my clients just being shared or tweet it, or you know, Google Plus and whatnot. Okay, make sure you have those. Now, the tool that I'm gonna recommend you to, to use is this one right here. It's called Go Schedule. They have a free version, and they also have a paid version. So what you can do, the cool thing about this bro is this. You can write the content, everything, schedule it, and guess what? It will shoot the content to your social media channel without you doing it manually. So once the blog post goes out, and you, see, you configure it to go to Facebook, it will go to Facebook or Twitter, or Google Plus, okay? I mean, I personally prefer manually, but if you're too busy, you want it to go by itself, and that's the cool thing about this awesome plugin, Core Schedule, okay? All right, any questions so far? Are we good? You guys are scholars, okay? <laughs> All right, so how to create an effective blog post? First, always, 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 make sure that you provide a valuable content. When I say valuable, anything that can help my customer in terms of changing their attitude, making them benefit from what I'm sharing, improve their life, improve their business, improve whatever I'm gonna improve, okay? That's what, I'm, that's what I mean by making it valuable. Some ideas, like you know, how to, 
how to do this, how to do, shoot that video, how to you know, take this photography, how to do web design, right? Tutorials, you know, interviews, reviews on product, like Jeff, he's a photographer, he can do reviews on different products, right? And make sure that you use a simple language, what I mean by that, don't make it look like you're writing like Shakespeare, too difficult to understand. <laughs> make it really simple and easy, maybe like high school, sadly, high school uh, level. No, uh, no grammar mistake. No, ah, thank you, Betty, yeah. Make sure there's no grammatical mistake. Otherwise, your quality goes... Absolutely, absolutely, yes. As I was saying, what do you think about investing then in a copy editor for or, or maybe even I mean, because when you have one set of eyes that have reread something, you know, the mind automatically corrects. Uh, so what do you propose on, on doing blogging to kind of keep that, cop, you know, to keep a nice copy out there? Excellent question, Melissa. So what should I do to make sure that my content is very good? First, of course, you write it, right? Second, you can use Atomic Reach to make sure it's, it's fine. Three, you can definitely pay somebody to proofread. To proofread it, or even somebody who's a blogger but can also proofread, give you some ideas and fix it. You can go to Fiverr for that. Okay, that's the only thing I recommend in Fiverr. You can hire somebody from Fiverr, make sure they're in the U.S. Excuse me, in the U.S. and they will, yeah, they will kind of do the copy for you. Or you can go to, you can go to Upwork.com or Writer Access is one of my favorite. Writer Access because they're all U.S. based, especially if you're in the U.S. You can also pay them to do a proofread and whatnot. Okay. But initially, you write that. It's like myself, to be honest with you, I don't write the blog 100% myself. I write the, like, I just kind of scratch and write it like an open draft, mm -hmm. and I send it to my proofreader, and they just fix it. Yeah. Okay, because I want to make sure that, I mean, I'm, I don't speak English, I don't know. Uh, you know, so my English doesn't come out right, so I need to make sure that, especially the grammar, importantly, is not messed up. Okay, keep, keep your posts useful and informative and accurate. When I say accurate, make sure the link information that you're sharing are legit, are valid. Don't just put an opinion without a back link to any resource, okay? That's what makes your blog uh, a cre a credible. Uh, take time to become an authority in your niche market. What I mean by that, you know, take your time to write about your blog, put more awesome content. It takes time, it's not gonna happen one night. You just gotta be consistent, okay? Encourage people to participate and blog in the comment. What I mean by that, this is another mistake that I see. At the end of the blog post, you know, don't just leave it like, empty-handed, like, you know, okay, so you talk about this topic and you stop at the end. No, say something like, if you like this blog, please comment. If you agree with this post, you know, or disagree, comment below or share it, okay? That's how you make it engage. And also make sure that, of course, I talked about having a, the comment box and also having the social media icon sharing. And don't forget, you need to implement on-site SEO. You need to make sure that your blog is optimized for the search engine. For that, you need to install Yoast SEO plugin. Okay? For blogging. For, for blogging, yes. You need to make sure the blog is optimized for the SEO. So you need to use that plugin called Onsite SEO. Okay? And last but not least, we'll talk about the comment box. All right. Any questions? Are we good? Yeah. Awesome. Now. What should you blog about? Uh, what should you blog about? So, uh, industry information like inventions, trade shows, company news, frequently asked questions, good causes, social action involvement, relevant information, new product, new service, new website, you know, new promotion. These are just ideas for you. Okay. Now you're gonna tell me you have no more ideas. <laughs> okay. I wanna see you guys blogging starting next month. <laughs> Any questions about it? Get? You getting this? All right. Okay, how to promote your blog? Of course, social media. Once you write the blog post, make sure you share it in your social media channels. Okay? Make sure you submit the search engine, I mean, sorry, submit the blog to a search engine. Like, if you have a Google Master Tool, you can actually submit that, the actual link if you want. You can also submit a press release about you started the blog. Not for every blog post, but, you know, you start a new blog about a specific niche, you can do a press release on that. Uh, guest blogging, even the Google kind of uh, went hard on uh, guest blogging, but it does help if you know somebody in your niche that are very well known or they have a good amount of traffic, and you can go and blog for them uniquely. That, what I mean by that, if I'm going to blog for Jeff, that's it. I'm going to do a guest blogging for him and nobody else because it is going to be unique for him. Okay, so there are, his audience will learn and I can also get some sort of exposure from his audience to myself. Okay, and the blog directory, like you know, blog loving, if you know what is blog loving, it's like a blog directory. So you can go there and join, and these are communities that help each other. 
So that can help you, help you get some organic traffic. Last one, blogging community. Here in San Antonio, we have two popular Facebook blogging community. One is called the San Antonio Blogger, mostly mommy bloggers. <laughs> and this has been recorded for now. Okay, mostly mommy bloggers. Then there's another one called Texas Blogger. So you can join the group and you can share your content in a very active community, okay? There's another website called uh, Blog Elevated. <clears throat> it's an organization. I think they have an event coming up in Dallas sometime, maybe next month. Okay, so check out, check their page and check out their website because they're very, very active and they're very helpful when it comes to like blog and whatnot. Okay, so you can get some support. Any questions so far, are we good? Yeah. All right, cool, that's it, the presentation is done. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to show you a couple of websites on how to use some of those tools, right? I'm not sure if it's going to be clear if they can see it. <laughs> what happened? I was going to say, if you can see it right here, there you go. Yeah, like delayed. All right, let me see. Let me show you guys. And it's funny, we didn't even, we didn't even, we didn't even plug this. <laughs> I was speaking like live on the phone. Thank God I'm too loud. <laughs> All right, let me show you folks right here. So, let me close this. You have a question. If you're a guest blogging, would you copy that blog post to your site? Excellent question. If you are guest blogging, should I copy the same? Oh, should I copy the same fucking content? The phone fell off. All right, silence. If I if I write a blog post, let's say on on Jeff's <coughs> site, right? If I write a blog post on Jeff's website, I would not copy it back on my on my site. In fact, let's say Jeff wants to copy it from my website to his. Do you think he can do that? Like not even in bed. Let's say, let's say Jeff completely, let's say Jeff completely copied my my, my actual blog post, completely copied it and put it on his website. Will that work? No, I don't because see. duplicate, right? Yeah. Yes, duplicate. But there is a way. Actually, you're not going to get penalized. There is a way that you won't get penalized, and that is by adding a real R E L canonical tag. Because what the real canonical tag does, it tells Google, hey, the original copy is with Yusuf, I'm just copying from him. So that way, he's not going to get ranked. To credit. You yeah, know. it goes back to me, yeah. But my advice, if I, I'm going to write it for him, I'll keep it unique for him. Because he has that uniqueness, right? If, if Jeff writes it for me, I want to make sure that I have it on him. And nobody else. You know why? Because so everyone can come and read from my page. Does that make sense? Okay. Any more questions? Uh, Scopers? Scopers? Okay. Let me show you a couple of sites here. Buzz Sumo, if you all can see it. Uh, Buzz Sumo. Could you, could you change the opening paragraph into a, um, a blog that you were pasting into your site? I mean, are you not allowed to make any changes? Or could you make an introductory? You can make it into introductory, you can make your own words and talk about it. Let's say, if I want to, if I saw Jeff wrote an awesome article, what I can do, I can go to my website and I'll talk about it a little bit. Basically, I'll give my opinion, like what I learned from Jeff's website. Then I can put a link that goes straight to his website. I mean, that should be the best part, best way to do it, okay? Okay, so this is uh, Buzz Sumu. So here I can possibly type, let's say, uh, yoga as a topic. Not sure if all can see it. And right now it tells me, like, these are the popular topic. Like, you have infographic articles, uh, guest posts, giveaways, interviews, and videos. All this trending topic under that keyword yoga. So right now I can look at this title. This one has, like, 400,000 share. Oh, my God. 400,000 share, 1,000 LinkedIn share, 400-something Twitter. So if I click on this blog right here, or this uh, specific title... Okay, so there you go. Guy posts yoga mat for sale. And on Craigslist, this is hilarious. Okay, so that's a topic, very popular. You can read it, 
and see if you could add this content within your own content, or you can just come with something different, like a similar title to make it attractive. Does that make sense? Love me some hearts. Okay, just make sure they don't tap and drive. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's that's the cool thing about Basumu. Okay, different awesome content. Okay. Now, for another tool right here, I want to show you, uh, what is it called? Tweak. Tweak. Your biz dot com. Oh, it didn't work. I hope it doesn't take me to, oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Try again, I misspelled it. Tweak. Your biz dot com. I love this tool. Did it work? Yeah. I love this tool because this one has a feature right here for a blog title or generating a good title. Okay, let's see what is there at uh, marketing. Okay, I'm gonna do this right now. I'm gonna do tweak your biz title generator. Okay, so this is the actual link. It's a tweak your biz dot com slash title slash I'm sorry slash title uh, uh, then dash generator so there you go you see this so this section here I can type for instance uh, let's say SEO okay and there you go look at that you can download all the titles if you want look at this apply these eight secrets technique to improve SEO be, uh, be, believing these eight myths about SEO keeps you from growing lot of ideas like list best <clears throat> best SEO Android apps how to how to make more uh, more SEO by doing less uh, question are you embarrassed by SEO you see tons of amazing titles you can copy exactly or it's only to give you an idea you can copy exactly I mean, can, that's fine but of course you have to change whatever you're talking about I mean it's not gonna be exactly the same thing right the whole, the whole purpose of this tool is to give an idea how you can repurpose it for your blog. Does that make sense? Because title is so important when it comes to like, not just a blog post, like Periscope titles, YouTube titles, you know, podcasts. If the title is interesting, that what catches the attention of the audience. Does that make sense? So that's uh, tweakyourbiz.com slash title dash generator. Okay, so that's the one. Now let me show you uh, Google Trend. So this is Google Trends. Okay, in Google Trend right here, it's the same thing. I can select. Uh, let me select the topic again. I'm just gonna. Politicians. Yeah, I'm gonna select the topic and let's say uh, and, uh, for SEO, as you can see, the, 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 it is very popular, the topic is very popular. Then I can also select, let's say, just United States. I can select the city, let's say Alabama, Alabama, right? I can select the city and see what kind of keywords is popular in that city. From here, it looks like uh, just certain optimization list. That's it. <laughs> nothing, nothing enough. So this will give you an idea for every city what kind of topic that is people searching for is popular. So that's the cool thing about Google Trend. Okay, and it will show you if it's going up or going down. Okay, right there. So that's called uh, Google Trend. Okay. Now let me show you Yahoo Answers. So there you go. Yahoo Answer is still popular. A lot of it's a, it's a big community. So you can look at different, you can ask questions, search for answers, or ask questions, and you can answer those questions. Sometimes you'll find the answer kind of ridiculous. Now this is an opportunity for you to write a blog post, answer it, and show you a link. That's how you'll get an organic traffic back to your site. Okay? So that is a Yahoo, uh, Yahoo, I'm sorry, answers.yahoo.com. Answers.yahoo.com. Okay, let's go ahead and check Atomic Reach. Uh, it's the Atomic. 
is atomic. There you go. So atomic reach. This is a, this is a tool that will help you to make sure that your title and your content is has a good score. And there is a WordPress plugin that you can download. If you use a WordPress, so this is an awesome. There you go. There's a there's a atomic reach. Just go to the plugin on the on the back end of the dashboard and uh, go ahead and just install that plugin. And once you install the plugin, you have to sign in and look at your content. It will give a score whether your content is good or whether your content needs a little bit of emotion or a little bit of cool ideas, okay? Very, very awesome tool. They have a free version and also paid version. For now, you can use the free version, okay? What else are we supposed to cover in terms of uh, tools? Tools, 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 let's see. Uh, we have... Uh, yeah, YouTube. You can also do some research on YouTube. Look for YouTube. YouTube Trends. There you go. So in the YouTube Trends dashboard right here, you see, it will show me the most popular uh, video. Nothing right now? What? Data is unavailable. Hmm. I'm going to select the age. There you go. I can select the age and see which, which topic right now uh, that is popular in YouTube. I can also compare it. I can click on compare, <clears throat> then compare with different age group. See that? Really? I think it's pulling up. Okay. I don't know why it's not pulling up, but it will definitely show you some comparison between the age group, like what age group likes which kind of content. And this and that, you can use it for YouTube channels. You can also use it for good content coming up for your blog and whatnot. So that's a YouTube map blog dashboard or YouTube trends. And the link is youtube.com slash trend dashboard, trends dashboard. Okay, youtube.com slash trends dashboard. Okay, what else we have? What else we got left? Co-schedule, co-schedule, yes. Co-schedule. This is an awesome uh, service. They have a free version and the paid. So what you can do, you can install the WordPress plugin and put your content, right? And it will automatically publish. I mean, WordPress has that feature anyway, but this one, if you write for the whole month, you can, you know, you can program it, you can schedule it. And the cool thing about it, you can also uh, uh, post those content to your social media channels. So you don't have to do it by yourself. And oh. it looks like Michael Hyde uses it too, <laughs> right? So let me show you the free, what is it, the, the WordPress, what is it, WordPress, WordPress, what is the WordPress one, pricing, $15 a month, try it now for free, I don't know why it's not letting me go forward, because when they came up for the first time, I got an account, so I'm not sure if they charge right now, so you double check, because I have an account. I'm able to share it with no problem. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Features. Features. Let me go back because there's a video right there. Look at that. Uh, marketing calendar, social media scheduling, uh, management, WordPress, Google Docs, even Evernote. Wow, nice. Evernote? Yeah. Why anytime fitness is there too? They're a client. That's what they said. Check it out. There you go. Let me. What is the volume? Why is the remote? Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, is the volume up? No? First, we can enter your WordPress blog seamlessly so that you can actually create content on the co-scheduled calendar and sync it directly hmm. into WordPress. Right. This includes your time. It's too high? It's not. So it shows right here the video, as you can see. See that? Look at that. You can also create a social media message. You can have a post of the blog of the Facebook. You can have a, like a, an actual post from Facebook. You can create it and it can go out with that message, like a custom message. Okay? It's pretty cool, right? So check out the website and watch the video again because it will show you how to set it up. Look at that. Pretty cool, right? Okay. So that's the co-schedule tool. Use that one. 
And for the blogging directory, we talk about blog loving. So you can go and join it. Blog loving. It's like a directory for blogs. You know, you can go and join that one. See if you can get some help. Another one I highly recommend is Blog Elevated or your yeah, blog. I don't know Michael Hyde was there once. There you go. So Blog Elevated. They have an event coming up in Dallas on September 18th to 20th. So it's a good community. You can join them on their Facebook as well. Very active community. All they do is just blog and they have a lot of tons of awesome tips and advice. Okay? Okay. All right. Yeah. How to get set on Periscope. Woohoo. All right, so that's it, folks. Any more questions? Well, um, Yusuf, when you uh, publish your blog, I mean, you publish straight onto your website. Uh -huh. There are other ways to kind of help your blog be uh, um, shared on other sites. Isn't there so, again, it kind of uh, has your name out there in more places, right? Right. What, what are some of those... Um. When people can share it, it's fine. I mean, they should share it. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. You know, they can share it. They can even talk about you a little bit. I mean, I can talk about your blog. I can give some few points. Then I'm going to put drop the link in. And that's totally well, kind fine. Of, kind of like your press release, like the way you were talking about the press release being mm -hmm. out there. What are other ways to really promote the blog um, so that it can be on other places? That you know, like, well, I want to make sure I catch as many of the eyeballs or uh, share to audiences as possible. Right. How do you? I mean, I know there's like, you know, guest blogging, but are there... Well, that's, that's an excellent question. That's an excellent question. How do you make sure that your blog can be reached by your audience, right? To be honest with you first, if you go organically, that's going to take you some time. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that, if you don't use Google AdWords or Facebook advertising to point back to your blog, it's going to take you some time. If you, if you do it organically, you've got to be patient, you've got to be consistent, okay? But you can use the social media to put your information out there, like, you know, tweet about it, Google Plus, or of course, Google Plus is going to be shut down pretty soon, or, or Facebook, or even Periscope it. If you talk about a good content, you can tell the folks, check this site. So there has to be some sort of effort. Does that make sense? And eventually it will grow by itself. It's not going to be fast. But if you want a fast results, then you got to use Facebook advertising. And post it, and you get a lot of traffic, new traffic to your site, to your actual blog post. What is a realistic timeline with organic reach on, on blogs? That is an excellent question. Um, there is no, get, there's no numbers. It can take anywhere between, it depends. If you want to rank, here's the thing. <clears throat> Don't just focus on the rank, but focus on getting the qualified customers or leads to your site. What you need to make sure is you need traffic. Mm -hmm. And traffic takes time, right? So I would say if you optimize your website properly, if you submit to Google Webmaster Tool, and if you blog every week, from my experience, when I used to blog it every week, within three months, I ended up getting 100 hits a day. Because I'm blogging every week, and I'm sharing it everywhere. Does that make sense? Yeah. But the way I did it way, way back, out of the four, only one was mine. The other three was a guest bloggers in my website. That's how I set it up back in the day. Okay. okay? But if you do it consistently and share it everywhere and engage, eventually it will build up. That's an organic way, right? Mm -hmm. But if you want something fast, Facebook advertising or Google AdWords. You gotta spend a lot of money, but you get a lot of hits mm -hmm. hitting your hitting, 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 that Absolutely. Way. So you can judge which articles have kind of generated the most eyeballs back. Absolutely. Not just that it will show you did the keyword work, mm -hmm. what are the keywords that are hitting my website. Because right now I'm helping a fashion blogger, <clears throat> some of the keyword that was number one has nothing had to do with the actual fashion blog. It was something that she wrote about family stuff. But for some reason that was getting more hits than the actual fashion tips. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the logics will tell you exactly what's going on. Okay. So uh -huh. I tried to blog. And I schedule to go to at least five, like past uh, Facebook. Uh -huh. Now the text, even in the same subject matter and the same subject, uh -huh. it have to be different for each social. Social. That's a good question. Or the one this week goes to the five social. The next week a totally different matter. It goes again to the other one. But the first week. The five places. Mm -hmm. The text for Pinterest mm -hmm. will be different for Facebook or 
for the average one? That's a good question. To be honest with you, it doesn't matter because you're sharing it. First, I have to make sure that the audience are not the same. What I mean by that, if you have a Facebook audience that are the same in Twitter, that are the same in Pinterest, then there's no point of sharing it everywhere. Does that make sense? I would say in most cases, all the audiences are not the same. So when you share it, you have two options. When you share it manually, it automatically goes to, let's say I'm gonna pick Facebook, it pops up a window, you can type something, you know, check out my latest blog post, that's it. And the title is still the same. You can do the same thing with Twitter, you can do the same thing with Pinterest. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have to worry about the title right now because all you do is just sharing it. You're sharing the title. Plus, if it's the same title, that's even better because if I saw it in Twitter, I know it's the same thing that I saw it in Facebook, so I don't have to read it again. Does that make sense? Okay. So you don't have to really worry about, should I change? No, you don't have to. Just but share it. Yes, the next week, it will be totally, it has to be totally different. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to share the same thing again. I mean, it depends. Again, in Facebook, I don't share more than once. But Twitter, yes, you can. Depends on how many audience we have. Because if they missed it this time, I can post it tomorrow again, the same topic. Or I can post it like Guy Kawasaki, you know Guy Kawasaki yeah. from Apple. He posts like four times the same thing. Not like right away, just you know, one time, then a few hours, then the second one again, third one again, exactly the same. Or you can change the title, like the tweet. I'm going to say, check this blog post about photography. Here's the link, right? I can post it again, photography tips by Jeff, check the link, you see? You can kind of play with it. But to keep it simple, just click share. That's the most simplest way. Or you can use the code schedule, and you can set it up, or you can go automatically to, to those places. Yeah, however you want it. Yeah, however you wanted to do it, yeah. All right, any more questions? We're good? Yeah. Any more questions from Periscopers? Awesome, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. If you wanna watch the replay, go to catch.me slash YouTube Chowdhury. If you need the presentation, give me a thumbs up. Who needs the presentation? Part of the presentation, give me a thumbs up. Anybody give me some thumbs up? <laughs> right? Anybody give me some thumbs up? Right? Yeah, I think there are a few people before you leave there. Okay. If you need the presentation, I will reply to your Twitter and give you a link so you can download it. Alright, I'll go ahead and turn off this scope. Thank you folks for joining in. Appreciate it. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Yeah, thumbs up for the presentation. Yeah, that's right. You go to catch up now? Uh, 